give in to the blackmail because he had no other plans ready for implementation. These people voted for the bailout deal, but we may yet see some of them not willing to vote for particular legislation. Um, so we have some, some of the MPs that, that may yet uh, deny voting for certain austerity legislation. And uh, we have the people that voted for Syriza. They don't really expect the deal to be implemented, or they expect Tsipras to move the burden on the rich. Well, that's not going to happen, in my view, because the Troika, the Troika is not interested in money. They're interested in imposing a specific social model. But anyway, um, we have two more interesting, two, uh, interesting things coming up. The Portuguese election, actually, uh, the day after tomorrow, Ah, uh, good. And the polling, polling, polling uh, um, shows that not a particular change of status quo is possible. And the Spanish election. But well, we know we learned from Greece. Don't believe the polls, and don't you know? There's always the red shift, uh, <laughs> so we don't believe it, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they show a fairly uh, great lead, anyway. And we have polling about the Spanish election of December 20th showing exactly the same thing. There's, there's no visible trend about uh, a shift of the status quo in other southern economies uh, being uh, attacked in this way of Greece. Uh, we had also members of the Popular Unity Party, the pro-Grexit party, announcing a detailed plan uh, this is by Professor Lapavitsas and uh, Heinrich Flasbeck. Heiner. Heiner, exactly. Yeah. Heiner Flasbeck, a German um, politician and economist. Um, and that's actually, uh, our listeners can find it in, uh, on the AthensRepublic.com. I've uh, published it there. And... Uh, these, uh, we had some popular unity um, members, former ministers, actually, uh, bullied, intimidating. They were in Ukraine. They were at um, uh, the Odessa region that's uh, governed by none other than Mikhail Saakashvili. Saakashvili. And uh, they were intimidated, chased and bullied by paramilitary groups, uh, right-wing fascists. And uh, we had a very interesting um, uh, situation there. They, uh, fortunately, they're back and they are safe. Um, this is it. Now, just a couple of th this uh, flashback. Um, yeah. Looking him up, right? So he's somebody who worked at Unktad, right? Unktad was considered one of the more radical parts of. Uh, of the United Nations bureaucracy. So he was at UNCTAD Geneva, right? United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Uh, so he was there for, uh, what, uh, you know, a good 10 years. But he, the problem with him is his um, theories seem to be based on two ideas. One, he wants to support Schumpeter or Schumpeter, this uh, German uh, origin uh, economist. Uh, and you remember the idea with Schumpeter is creative destruction, right? Let the depression burn itself out, right? Let it play itself out, right? It's, it's actually close to the uh, Austrian or, or uh, libertarian view. But at the same time, he's got uh, Wilhelm Lautenbach. And Lautenbach is the guy that we've talked about here. Lautenbach is the guy who says, you don't let the uh, depression burn itself out. You fight the depression. You launch a two billion mark, Reichsmark, uh, proposal in those days, and you start building the autobahn, and you build the telephone system, and uh, railroads, and other things. And you soak up a whole bunch of unemployment, and you cut Hitler off at the knees. So the Nazis might not have made it. So the the big question with Flashback is: Are we going to get the Schumpeter side of him with creative destruction? I hope not. Or are we going to get the Lautenbach side? So the Lautenbach is, is again, what I think listeners of the program uh, know, right? That's pretty much what I also uh, represent, right? The, the um, W.S. Wojtynski German trade union plan, right? The uh, 
the one presented, from the trade union. Yeah, presented right? at the Friedrich Society Club. Yeah, the uh, Friedrich List Society is the is the Lautenbach side, and then the, the Wojtynski Tarnow Bada uh, WTB. Right, that's the trade union, one. and they agreed, and that would have been the basis for avoiding Hitler. Except this windbag uh, Hilferding said, no, 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 we can't do that because it violates Marxism. And it was actually because Hilferding was uh, British and, uh, you know, in league with uh, with Brüning, the uh, austerity king. So that's that. No, we, I think we have the, the positive part because it, they're talking about technology and production. And uh, all I see is uh, positive things, actually. He... Uh, Professor Lapavitsas has worked in Argentina, in, about China. He has these particular models of uh, industrial um, development and growth and uh, technological, um, cutting-edge technology. Um, so I think we're going to get something positive from this. But we must uh, start. And there we are. So thank you, Michael. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm going to say a few words about Ibsen here in the next segment. Welcome back to Hour 2 of the World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley speaking from Washington, D.C. On this afternoon of Friday, the 2nd of October, we're now in the uh, fourth quarter. And let me now repeat my cordial invitation to anybody who is in the Washington, D.C. area or can get here, please come to the National Press Club on f Monday evening, Monday, October 5th, Monday, October 5th at 5.30 p.m. for the dinner party and uh, 7 o'clock for the talk. This is going to be an illustrated version with slides, and I hope there'll be good slides. I'm working on it. Uh, concerning the contribution of the Russian fleets to the victory of Lincoln and the Union in the Civil War, preventing the snakes of uh, uh, Henry Gladstone and, uh, and the, uh, the rest of them, Lord Palmerston, Lord John Russell, and Louis Napoleon Bonaparte from intervening on the side of the slaveholding Confederacy. So that's going to be the Capitol Hill Civil War Roundtable sponsor in the National Press Club, top of the uh, building, right? Top 14th floor, the club part. And that's the um, Monday, October 5th, 5.30 p.m. for the dinner, 7 p.m. for the, uh, for the uh, actual talk. Please come early. Now, concerning Ibsen, right, the wild duck, this is the story, right? Uh, is, it, uh, is it a good idea to give somebody a myth about himself so that he can keep going? So it's a conversation between two guys, Gregors and Relling. And there's a third guy that they're trying to, that they're discussing, a guy called uh, Hjalmar Moldvik. And uh, Relling has said uh, to Moldvik, you know, you're really a demon. And uh, this, the question is, you know, it, it doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just a way for the guy to make some um, myth about himself so that he can keep going. And uh, Relling, of course, is a total cynic. And Relling says, you know, you should, you should always bear in mind that ideals um, are not really uh, anything that counts. We ought to use the national word uh, <laughs> or slogan, Norway, lies, he says, uh, the other guy says, aren't, aren't these the same thing? Yes, they are. Uh, Gregors then says, look, I'm going to liberate this poor Mel Molvik from your clutches. And Relling, this is the key quote, Relling then says, that would be the worst thing that could happen to our friend Molvik, because if you take away from the average man his vital lie, his vital lie, at the same time, you're going to take away his happiness and his sense of life. So it's the idea, you've heard this as a cliche, right? That every, if you take away people's illusions, you leave them with absolutely nothing. So uh, we uh, naturally stand in reality. And uh, the advice for Greece is stop with the chauvinism, organize internationally, right? You can't expect it to, you know, you don't have a magic wand, but uh, do something, you know, ally with that Portuguese party, 
ally with the Spanish party, especially if they get rid of now the failed leadership of Pablo Iglesias, who has done very poorly in uh, Catalonia, and um, also start an international consultation, right? There will be this, um, this Plan B, the International Plan B Conference. There was a, an event earlier uh, this, this month, I guess, in Paris with Mélenchon for the French uh, Le, Le Parti de Gauche, uh, La Fontaine for Die Linke, the left of Germany, uh, Fasina of, uh, of one of the Italian parties, and uh, Varoufakis. Okay, fine. So uh, the Tax Wall Street Party is highly interested. By the way, if people find out more about that, please send me uh, the information. Go to the Speakers Bureau part of tarpley.net, and there's a text box. Put it in there, and I will certainly uh, thank you for it, because we're highly interested uh, in, uh, in intervening. Now, uh, let's see if we conclude the international uh, section. Um, I guess we have. So now look, uh, some stuff on the um, domestic front. We're being asked about the Trump tax plan. Well, trumped up is the only way to describe the Trump tax plan. It's trickle-down economics. How many times are you going to fall for this from a reactionary Republican demagogue, in this case, a fascist Republican demagogue? Let's have tax cuts for the rich. And remember, as soon as they start talking about percentages, forget it. The way to do tax reform is to increase the standard deduction and the uh, personal exemptions. Increase those and you'll have tax reform from the bottom up, helping working families, not percentages where the, for example, according to Trump, the top rate goes from 40 percent almost to 25 percent. The corporate income tax goes from 35 to 15, uh, lowering the tax on uh, uh, speculation. The estate tax, right? The, 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 the t oligarch tax, as I call it, right? The ill-gotten loot tax is eliminated. So this is a gift to parasitic millionaires, zombie bankers, hedge fund hyenas, uh, and other uh, parasites. Um, we want the 1% Wall Street sales tax. He doesn't seem to have that in there. Uh, and of course, the argument is, oh, if you, if you say that the deficit will grow, uh, and of course the experts do, the, the accountants, not even experts, but they would say that the, uh, the deficit would grow uh, enormously, um, which again, uh, if you were getting something for it, if you, know, if you were making capital investments, that would be something to, you could at least argue. We want to do it through a combination of the 1% Wall Street sales tax and seizing the Federal Reserve, forcing them to cough up six trillion initial tranche of uh, cheap 0% long-term U.S. credit for infrastructure and education to rebuild the entire physical plant. Boy, if you've been in the New York City subways lately, that $5 trillion for infrastructure is long overdue. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the deficit would balloon, and again, for no benefit, right? It would, uh, it would simply uh, do what it did under Reagan, right? And the way Reagan responded was by uh, increasing, uh, you know, by gouging it out of Social Security with the help of Greenspan. So uh, not good. Um, this is typical Republican economics. It's trickled down. Uh, we noticed that he's gotten the endorsement of Grover Norquist. Now, this is one of the biggest political harlots in the Capitol. Right? This is the guy with the Wednesday meeting to plot, to plot overall reactionary strategy. Maybe that Wednesday meeting of Grover Norquist is not uh, everything it used to be, but uh, – it's still uh, the kiss of death as far as anybody with a brain. And notice they say, oh, your, your uh, predictions of the deficit growing, that's based on static scoring, static scoring. We got to have dynamic scoring. And that's all based on the idea if you lower the tax rate, then the economic activity increases so that the net uh, receipts, tax revenue, goes up. Sorry, it hasn't worked. It didn't work under Reagan, and it won't work. 
Now, we hear a lot now about the several trillion dollars that U.S. corporations have stashed overseas. And as usual, 